Hello, my name is Libby, uh, and I am one of three members of the Grand Salmon Expeditionary Team. And in April of last year, our all-women team of athletes and land stewards set out to highlight the urgency of protecting our region's endangered salmon populations, uh, specifically within the Snake River Basin. And over 78 days, we skied and kayaked roughly a thousand miles from the headwaters of the Salmon River within the Snake River Basin to the Pacific Ocean, uh, tracing the outmigration of juvenile salmon. And our expedition was intended to generate action and awareness around two much needed actions, uh, the breaching of the Lower Snake River dams and the termination of the proposed Stibnite gold mine. Uh, along our journey, we held grassroots events, we connected with tribal communities, and we heard the stories of people impacted by salmon decline. Through these efforts and through social and written media, we reached over 300,000 people and sent roughly 350 postcards to Congress. Uh, we came away with beautiful footage and stories from the expedition, which we hope can continue generating positive impact through film. And we think that the story is a powerful one and that there are compelling reasons to tell it right now. Uh, first and foremost, salmon population decline is an urgent issue of tribal justice. Uh, the persistence of salmon is an explicit treaty right, which the US government has a duty to uphold, and we hope that our story can join the thousands of voices from across the region calling for the treaty rights of sovereign tribal nations to be upheld. And this expedition gave us the opportunity to witness a river system in its entirety. And right now we are working to weave the stories and the, the breadth of knowledge we encountered together, combining these voices with our own experiences from the expedition. And our hope is to paint a compelling picture of a resilient species that form the backbone of salmon nation. Uh, and hopefully to tell an inspiring and also cautionary story of all that we have to save and why it's important to do so. Our journey was, it was a return to a form of travel and communication and education that has been practiced since time immemorial throughout Salmon Nation. We simply paddled this river and followed the fish migration and we we just acted as the thread that wove together the efforts of each community that we encountered on the banks of the Salmon, the Snake, and the Columbia Rivers. We want to share this model of activism because we found it to be truly expansive in its impacts um, so that others who wish to catalyze further positive changes throughout Salmon Nation may replicate our project and, and further disrupt <laughs> the current colonial energy and cultural and economic practices that truly harm this bioregion and, and fail to contribute to the health of the communities that live on this land and that love this land. Um, on our journey, we focused in on the goals of removing these harmful Snake River dams and instating a moratorium on the Stibnite gold mine which has been poisoning the headwaters of the Salmon River. But the types of issues that this model could address are endless in nature. And, and so to do this, we need the financial resources to produce and share our film telling the story of the Salmon Source to Sea. This is a film that is elevating powerful, regenerative voices throughout Salmon Nation and it will provide clear, actionable information to our audience and our community on how they can take part in shifting the course of these rivers and our practices in life back to a more abundant, sustainable flow state. The number of salmon returning to Idaho this year is projected to be among the lowest in decades. With the Chinook salmon population dwindling, they are now protected under the Endangered Species Act. The Chinook salmon may only have 20 to 30 more years left in our region if something isn't done now. Yeah, Idaho salmon and steelhead are in really serious decline. The low numbers have many alarmed, including an Idaho congressman who is asking, what if we remove dams to restore salmon? Nice. The Sufferfest has officially begun. Lower Granite Dam Portage.
Life doesn't always go according to plan. You can prepare as much as you want, but in the end, one stray thread can pull everything apart. So let's pull some threads. We're going on a trip that will last for over two months as we paddle the Salmon River from its source to the sea. I'm a professional kayaker, and our team is made up of women who are both expert paddlers and environmental advocates. We are seeing the salmon populations of, of Idaho and of the Snake River Basin declining. For over 1,000 miles, we're paddling the journey salmon have made for generations from the mountains of Idaho to the Pacific Ocean. But along the way, we'll face the same hardships as the salmon, navigating steep whitewater and brutal dams. This trip may be one of the hardest things I've ever done, and the salmon struggle to navigate this river each year. This is the way that they're treating humans who want to go through the dams. Like, how are they treating the fish? There are no markers, there's no place to put in. I just can't continue to sit by while our salmon populations dwindle and die. 